What's up in War Eagle War Report family? You got Ike Jones back with another morning drop. And today we are talking about the defensive back position for Auburn University. Nehemiah Pritchett, gone. DJ James, gone. How can Auburn get productivity out of position that they have had a lot of in the past, but no longer on the team? Let's talk about it. Y'all know how we do right here, War Report style. Let's drop it on them. You are, you are now listening, now listening to, to the War the Report. Report. Drop. Morning drop. It is Wednesday, March 27th. We're here talking a little bit about the defensive back position. Coach Crime is back on the planes coaching this team. It looked like it wasn't going to be the case, but he is back. Um, brief little situation where he had to step away, you know, came on back. Uh, but he's got a room that is some experience not a lot of experience but definitely lost the most experienced guys from the room before we get into the conversation please do the necessary and share this video with somebody out there wherever you are if you're listening to this on podcast please share the pod with somebody make sure you add us at the war report all over social media but let's talk about the defensive back position slash cornerback position um a lot of experience walked out of the door uh, we'll talk about the room as it is. Uh, productivity from last year, though, 125 tackles as a unit last year, three interceptions, uh, two of those by DJ James, the other one by Nehemiah Pritchett. Both of those guys no longer here. Uh, but Auburn has had two, those two guys were there for the last two seasons, anchoring the uh, the outside corner positions for Auburn. Uh, and that's going to be a big situation to try to figure out how you're going to replace because you've had guys who have been there and you could count on in your rotation uh you know injuries you you never know what's going to happen Nehemiah Pritchett was out for a portion of the year last year which allowed Kay and Lee to step in and get some early reps at the outside corner um but DJ James was kind of a stalwart there for the last two years and he's no longer there one of the best cover corners in college football last season no longer out there on the outside so what is Auburn going to be able to do what is coach crime going to do in this new DJ Durkin defense to be able to make sure that Auburn can continue to have some consistency at the outside corner maybe even get better I don't know how you get better losing two senior contributors like that Uh, a lot of speed and athleticism gone from that exterior corner or the outside corner position but let's talk about the guys that are no longer here. I've already mentioned to, of course, you you, you have uh, the guys that, you know, decided they were done. And, you know, one of these we're going to have to talk about because it is a more recent development. But uh, let's just start at the, the top of the list here before we get into name three that's there on the list. But Nehemiah Pritchett, the senior, 471 snaps uh, last year. He had been at Auburn from his freshman season, one of the fastest defensive backs on the team, Uh, graduated, now trying to go and play in the NFL, you know, had pro day recently, showed off that speed at the NFL combine. Uh, Nehemiah Pritchett likely is going to be, I would say, is a guy who's going to get drafted, right? I think he has a good opportunity to get, be a late round draft pick for some team that's looking for some speed at the corner position. A lot of snaps in the SEC that will translate well to being able to play out there on Sundays. Um, he's a guy who is a willing tackler. He showed his ability to come up and tackle and, and really be physical uh, in the uh, games he played last season. Again, he started off the season hurt. And uh, when he got back in there, he jumped right in and was able to solidify one of the outside corner positions and give Auburn some additional depth and rotation out there. But definitely going to be missed, you know, up and down performances throughout the season. There were some times where, you know, he was every corner gets beat every now and then. I think people made a little bit too much of him getting beat on occasion just because of the moments in which it happened. But uh, Nehemiah Pritchett, definitely a solid contributor for the Auburn Tigers and going to be missed out there at the outside corner. The other guy, DJ James, again, I already said one of the better cover corners in college football, 691 snaps, the most snaps for anybody in this defensive back room. Also uh, graduated, headed up to the NFL to try to make his mark out there and he uh, again a person who I expect to get his name called um, from on draft day not sure what round he's going to end up being in but he is someone who I anticipate getting drafted into the NFL another defensive back for the Auburn Tigers who will get an opportunity to make his name in on Sundays and and at someone's uh, 
professional team. Uh, looking forward to seeing what DJ James does. Again, he led the uh, the defensive back unit last year with two interceptions on the season. Uh, one of those coming courtesy of a pass breakup from uh, the guy we talked about yesterday in Jalen Simpson in that LSU game. Uh, an absolutely marvelous pass breakup there uh, from, from Simp. And DJ James was the, the recipient of that deflection that happened there. But, uh, you know, he's a guy who has been sticky at the outside corner. Now, the biggest issue for DJ James was tackling at some points, but he improved at that as the season went on, uh, but never doubted his ability to cover over there. So going to be missed. Um, I'll skip over this third name here just because I want to come back to it. But Tony Hundley and Greg McConico Jr. Now, Greg is still on the team, but he has moved over to uh, the wide receiver room. But uh, still there at the walk-on spot. And Tony Hundley, no longer with the team, um, a guy who really, you know, again, another walk-on, didn't really get a lot of opportunities to play. So we don't really know what would have been missed there. But J.D. Rim, let's talk about the J.D. Rim situation. J.D., a guy who played 54 snaps last season. J.D. is a guy who I was very high on. Um, I thought that he was a solid contributor, a very physical corner there on the outside that was able to I thought step in and play admirably the season before last particularly late in the season um, out there after Cadillac took over as the interim coach he got most of his snaps during that point in time really liked what I saw in his ability to compete out there at the outside corner and then last year dealt with some situations off the field, uh, some injuries and some other things that were happening with him that stopped his ability to actually get out there and contribute last season. And basically all of that kind of came to a head. Um, the, the, during the off season, there was some conversations with the coaching staff about what his place would be on the team, considering some of the trouble that had happened off the field. And uh, they, they would wait it out through the spring to just kind of see whether or not he was going to be a guy who could work his way into that rotation. And ultimately, uh, they decided to part ways here recently, uh, as recently as yesterday, as reported by a few people that are in the know there with the team. I think on three might have been the first people to report this publicly, uh, but there just had been too much friction uh, off the field there and decided to go in a different direction. And J.D. Rim hit the transfer portal or will officially hit the transfer portal once it opens up, but has um, it, it is away from the team right now. But not someone who uh, Auburn fans should be happy to see go as far as his talent on the field is concerned because the young man is supremely talented and I think would have worked well in the system that D.J. Jerkin um, has ready. But there's some confidence in some of the young guys that are coming up in this room, which allowed the team to feel like, hey, listen, you know, maybe you need a fresh start. We need a fresh start. So he's been uh, allowed to hit the transfer portal. Wish the best of luck to J.D. and what he uh, has in his future with football and hope he finds a good landing spot once he's able to officially hit the transfer portal. Uh, but that's going to be it for the guys who are no longer with the football team due to whatever reasons. Let's move over to the guys who are coming back for this season. And these are the guys that you really want to kind of focus in on as Auburn fans. Starting with Keontae Scott. Another tumultuous offseason story there. You know Keontae Scott's my guy. Um, you know, he declared he was going to be coming back when he had the opportunity to potentially test the draft waters for himself, decided he was going to come back, and then kind of out of nowhere, decided to hit the transfer portal. And, you know, a lot of reasonings as to why that happened. I'm not going to go back into that whole situation, but uh, eventually decided to come back and um, exit the transfer portal. And he's a guy that's going to be looking to have a dynamic senior season to increase his draft stock. Um, he has some designs on wanting to play the outside corner for Auburn this season, but he is a guy who I expect him to move around and be versatile and be able to play multiple spots, uh, both of the outside corner positions as well as that slot star nickel cornerback for Auburn. Um, as you can see, he was one of the better defenders on this defense last year. He was really a, a kind of, not kind of, he was one of the vocal leaders for the defensive backfield last season. And when he went down and he was injured for that portion of the season, the defense looked noticeably different. And he brought a different energy, a different swagger to the defense when he got back. Uh, looking forward to seeing a full healthy season of Keontae Scott out there on the field uh, to be able to contribute. Uh, you know, particularly really good in the run game coming up as a run stopper in the box. Um, 
did a really good job in coverage for the most part this season. Had some some hiccups in the bowl game uh, at the outside corner position. I've said this before. I think that uh, Keontae is better as a um, as a zone corner, uh, particularly on the outside, than he is as a press man corner. But he plays his own principles really well, and that's why I th- think he flourished well in that Ron Roberts defense, just because of the zone principles. Just a very intelligent player and understanding where he needs to be. Looking forward to seeing how he leads and contributes to this room that is really full of people who don't have a lot of snaps. When you look, other than KN Lee last year, who was a true freshman last season, who's next on this list, there aren't a lot of guys that have snaps in this defensive backfield room. Uh, KN Lee was uh, a guy who competed really well on the outside for Auburn early in the season when Nehemiah Pritchett was down, mentioned that earlier. Uh, and he came in and he was able to to do well, but definitely showed some freshman moments out there. Looking forward to seeing what the progress from him is going to be. Heard really good things all last year from a, from quite a few people connected to the program in terms of just his willingness to get up and learn and 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 devote himself to his craft and always really trying to be perfecting the, the the details of how he's going to be a cornerback. Uh, so looking forward to seeing how he performs in his in this upcoming season. And hopefully he's going to be a guy that sees a lot of snaps for Auburn because I like the tenacity that he brings, just the doggest nature in which he goes out there and competes on a consistent basis. Uh, next up, you have Tyler Scott here who did not see much uh, playing time last season. Uh, a guy who I expect to be in competition for maybe one of those uh, rotational pieces in that slot corner spot or that star position. I think that's going to be the best spot for him to be able to compete and looking forward to seeing what he's able to do there um, for Auburn coming up in the future. J.C. Hart, uh, another guy who was came into Auburn as potentially someone who could play wide receiver. I actually could still see him potentially sliding over into the wide receiver room if there's a need over there for him in the upcoming season. Uh, But J.C. Hart, a guy who's more, he's a, a taller corner, who could compete on the outside. I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how he fits into this whole piece. Haven't heard a lot from J.C. Harton during the um, practices so far and didn't hear a lot from him last season, didn't get into um, spring last year. So he was only there for fall camp, a little bit behind there. So first full spring there with Auburn. And uh, this is going to be his opportunity to really make some room, uh, some waves in that room. Colton Hood next here, and he is a guy that I absolutely expect to compete for one of the outside corner positions. I loved what I saw from him in the bowl game. I love what I'm seeing or hearing so far from him uh, in practices during the spring. He's someone who I absolutely expect to come out there and compete. I would not be shocked to see if they put out a too deep uh, depth chart early before the fall or, or, or in the fall that Colton Hood's name is is going to be in one of those spots there where he's able to step in and really play some some contributing minutes for Auburn this coming season. Love the the way that this young man competes. Um, only played 44 snaps last season, but he looked good in those snaps. As you can see, his PFF numbers look really good. Uh, one of the better uh, PFF numbers overall for defense in that defensive back room of the returners. Uh, actually, the second best next to Keontae Scott. Champ Anthony, um, Coach Freeze has said good things about him and his leadership that he's been able to display this offseason. I love the the way that he competes out there. He's not the best coverage corner, but he is another guy who I've heard is really just out there working hard and trying to get better at his craft. He's another one of those guys that I expect to, to potentially factor into that star. I don't think he's really an outside corner right now. He can probably play out there, but I think he's more of a nickel uh, st- slash star slash slot corner, uh, and that's where he's going to fit in most uh, aptly for this team. He played some good minutes at um, special teams last year. I expect him to continue to contribute there for Auburn, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how Champ Anthony continues to to improve and become a, a solid contributor for this team going forward. And lastly here, you got Rod Elston, one of the walk-ons. Didn't get any snaps last season. Another guy who probably is not going to factor heavily into this um f- room but someone who you, you you're glad to have the depth there for him to be out there and come and compete but looking forward to again to seeing how all of these young men compete but right now you know if you're looking at your outside corners I think Kay and Lee Colton Hood are probably the top two guys out there at the outside corner and then you're going to have Keontae Scott who's going to float around between outside corner and he's likely your starter there at your star slash slot slash nickel 
um, cornerback. And then next up, you're probably going to have Champ Anthony in that rotation um, moving in there at the star. And then probably Tyler Scott is the next guy that I would expect to be one of the guys competing in that space as far as the returning guys are going. And we're going to talk about some additions to the room here in just a minute because there are additions to this room that I expect to factor in heavily. And this is another one of those position groups where I think the competition is a little bit more fierce than people think. And that's really, really, really good for Auburn in terms of if you're able to keep all of these guys in here and happy that you have a very deep and competitive room going into the fall that will allow you to play really well. All right. Let's get over and talk about the sponsor of today's show before we get too far. And that is our folks over at Manscaped, one of the favorite sponsors here at the War Report. Definitely appreciate the good folks at Manscaped. Because, listen, this season, make sure that you groom your carpets and the drapes. With the leaders in below the waist grooming, clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. Introducing the season's champ, that Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Uh, the fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blades, a standard one for taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions though. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking for to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, there's always the right tool for the job with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use code report at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping using code report at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. All right. It's enough of that. Let's get back into the conversation, though. We are here talking defensive back right here on the morning drop brought to you by Rogue Shop and Manscaped today. And let's talk about the additions to the room here at the defensive back. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, now there's there's not a lot of additions. There's only two guys. Uh, but those two guys, I think, are going to be heavy, heavily factoring into this race. First and foremost, you've got the freshman, Jay Crawford. Heard some really, really good things about Jay Crawford and how he's progressing. He is now a freshman to look out for as far as getting playing time this season. Early and often, I think Jay Crawford has the ability to come in and potentially play for Auburn early in the season. Don't be surprised if you see Jay Crawford crack the two deep early coming into this year just because of the way he's going out there and competing at that outside corner I think he's got good athleticism good size good speed to be able to come out there and contribute immediately now I don't know if he's going to start but I do think he has a potential to be in that conversation for the two deep early for Auburn he is one of the freshmen I have to look out for this season Next up, you got Antonio Kite. He's the transfer over from Alabama. Uh, it's his third year in college football. Uh, redshirted that first year and then came. Didn't really get a lot of playing time last year. As you see, 22 snaps last season and mixed bag of what he was able to do out there on the field. But he's another guy whose athleticism is through the roof. Um, looking forward to seeing how he's able to adjust. New defense, new environment coming over into Auburn. Is he going to be able to get out there and compete for one of those outside corner positions? Um, you know, he's a guy who I've heard about his work ethic as well. And of course, we know that he's got the athleticism to go out there and perform. But I am looking for it. He, he's a guy who I'm going to be looking for in the spring game to just kind of see how he competes out there against the wide receivers for Auburn and whether or not he's going to be able to to really match the hype that he's come in with, because he has come in with a lot of hype in this offseason. So, uh, you know, I, I am hoping that he's a guy who delivers on that hype because, you know, Auburn needs some solid corners to be able to uh, make sure that that uh, defensive backfield is solid. We've already talked about the safety room and how there's a lot to replace there. There's a lot to replace on the outside corners as well. And the, I think the competition is good, but the cream is going to need to rise to the top. And we'll see if Antonio Kite can be one of those guys who are part of that cream that rises to the top for this defensive back group. All right, now let's get into it. Let's talk about the folks that have the absolute most to prove this year. Um, 
I think that conversation actually starts with a new guy. I normally don't do that for the fall and say a, a new guy has the most to prove, but I think Antonio Kite has a lot to prove here for this Auburn football team just because he's a guy that has already transferred into the program, and I don't think he's transferred in to want to be – you know, third or fourth on the depth chart. He's a guy who needs to be making some strides during the fall, the spring, so that when the fall comes, he's ready to step in and really be in that two deep rotation for Auburn at the defensive back. So he's a guy that I I, I want to see some good sh- or hear some good things about from him going into the fall. Um, outside of that, they're really the only other guy that I think has something to prove. I guess you can say is going to be a guy like J.C. Hart. Right. J.C. Hart's a guy who I mentioned earlier who um, could factor in to maybe move back over to be a wide receiver if the space becomes available there. And that's, uh, you know, an option for this team to move him to the wide receiver spot. But uh, if he's going to be a defensive back for this team going into this season, he's going to need to have a good spring. Uh, I think that this competition is just really good at that spot. And because there are young freshmen that are coming in, and this is why I feel the same way about Antonio Kite, the, the young freshmen that are going to be coming in in the fall are going to factor into this room as well. So they're going to need to make strides while they have the upper hand on those guys to make sure that those freshmen see a red shirt uh, next to their name when they go into next offseason. Uh and they have positioned themselves in the place where, you know, Keontae Scott, this is his last year of eligibility, so you know he's going to be moving on. But KN Lee is still young and still has a, a, another year of eligibility that he could absolutely come back and take advantage of at Auburn next year. Um, if Jay Crawford is as good as advertised right now during the fall, he's moving up in the ranks and he's going to be able to be there for the next few years, right? So you've got some competition amongst the younger guys that are there. I've already talked about Tyler Scott and how he's got to be at the ability to kind of step in Colton Hood a young guy so there's a lot of youth in this room so I think guys that have a, another year of eligibility that they've already utilized right now JC Hart is a redshirt freshman so this is really kind of his first year of burning eligibility but I, if he doesn't get off to a good start here in the spring I think that he puts himself behind the eight ball for the fall so he needs to have a good spring as well as Antonio Kite so those are the two guys I feel like have the most to prove this spring in order to position themselves to be in a great place for next next uh, fall and then going into next season for Auburn University. All right, but that's it. That's enough of me talking. What I want to hear from you is number one, how do you feel about the departure of J.D. Rim and how is that going to impact what you have right now and right now at the cornerback? Number two, who are you looking forward to seeing the most coming out of the spring as making some sort of leap? And number three, who do you feel like has the most to prove out of this room to be able to make some ground up before the fall gets here? That's it, man. That's all I got for y'all. And I appreciate you jumping in here with me on another morning drop. We will talk basketball tonight a little bit more because, you know, KD Johnson is hit the transfer portal so I know the guys are going to talk about that tonight they'll give you their final thoughts about the season but before you get out of here make sure you visit the sponsor rogueshop.com is the sponsor of the morning drop use code report when you do that at America's number one online dispensary which is the rogue shop sleep stress pain anxiety all of those things can be ailed right there at the pro uh, at the rogue shop and tell them the war report sent you by using code report before you get out of here please like the video subscribe to the channel share the content with somebody we'll be back at you with the midweek report poor tonight but until the next time and as always war eagle